Uh, Flex Mode again, I'm back with you with part four of the video with hiding the church and let your light shine. You know, the church has gotten very lukewarm. The church has became the church to lay on the scene. They are almost near the point of becoming like Ichabod. The glory has departed. But you know, how long are we going to continue to live any kind of way, do what we want to do, and do all this nonsense stuff that God is not even pleased with? Yeah, we live in America. We live in one of the greatest countries. They say the greatest country. But in my eyesight, we far away from it. In my opinion, just my opinion, I feel that we need to repent and get right with God. Quit playing around, quit being foolish about stuff, and just, just, just let God have his way in this country, in this land. Because the Bible says, if my people which are called by my name to humble themselves and pray and seek my faith, then when I hear from heaven, then when I forgive their sins and heal the land. If my people shall call by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my faith, then when they hear from heaven, then when they begin to experience my forgiveness, then when they begin to experience revival again, when they now they begin to experience healing again, they begin to experience the power of God moving in the church again. They begin to see the glory of God like it should be seen. And the Bible says that the children waited earnestly for the manifestation of the Son of God. The peoples are looking for a manifestation of God. These people are looking for answers. And it's time for us as the children of God, the people of God, the children of the Most High God. It's time for us to rise up and allow the true and living God to be manifest in our lives, manifest in our walk, manifest in our conversation, in our well speaking and matter of fact even had child as children of God we supposed to conduct ourselves better than what we conduct in ourselves. We don't supposed to conduct ourselves like the ungodly, like the world. We don't supposed to conduct ourselves like hogmongers, lords, the dodgers and fornicators. We ain't supposed to conduct ourselves that way. That's no whores in God's kingdom. That's no fornicators in God's kingdom. And there's no scallywags in God's kingdom. In God's kingdom are the pure and righteous, the holy, those that's made themselves available for God, those that are sanctified and set apart, those who are living a holy life, those who are reading and studying and meditating on God's holy word. We are people of power and dominion of authority. We are people of all nationality, color, and creed. But see, God said, with one blood, I made all nations. So, God's people are people of love. We love everybody. We love every race, every color, every creed, every nationality. Wherever you came from, wherever your background is, we love you. We embrace you. Because the Bible says so. Righteousness assaults a nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. My Caucasian brother, I love you. My black brother, I love you. My African brother, I love you. My Japan brother, I love you. Japanese, Chinese, China, Hong Kong, Africa, London, UK, Canada, I love you. Brothers and sisters from all over the world, I love you. I extend my hands over to you. Even though that man had no Christ, they may have been living, living in sin. Man, that know the way or they they could. Some of them might have backslid. But guess what? I love you too, and I'm praying for you, and I'm working you to come back into the family of God. Come back and allow God to touch you again. Allow God to strengthen you again. Allow God to make your life right new. Yeah, you may have been tricked by the enemy. You may have been deceived. You may have been hurt, wounded, disappointed, 
You may have went through all types of hell. You may have been on the verge of committing suicide. Guess what? God loves you and God wants to hold you. God wants to embrace you. God loves you so much that he gave his only begotten son just for you. God want to give you another gift. He want to give you a gift. He want to give you himself. Don't let the enemy trick you. Don't let the enemy deceive you. Know that God loves you. Know that God cares about you. Is that cast all your cares upon me for I really care? God said, God was so loved the way he gave his own to God and God. We all know that scripture. That's, a very, that's, not, that's probably about the most well-versed scripture ever known by anybody. Yeah, religion, man, you may call yourself religious. God loves you too. Islam, Muslim, God loves you too. Brother, you know, they may be confused, sister, you confused, guess what? God loves you. Though they may be partaking in a homosexual relationship, lesbian relationship, guess what? God loves you. That's why he died. That that spirit that has deceived y'all for so long will fade away. Because it's through the blood of Jesus that you will be living. It's through the blood of Jesus that you'll be made whole. It's through the blood of Jesus you can be made brand new. Yeah, I, I could be like a pet bull and cut you down. Yes, I could. But I have none but the love of God for you. And I want to see God say, I want God to bless you. I want God to make things brand new. I want to see God transform you. I want to see you blessed. I want to see you prosper. I want to see you walking in the love of God. And to all my brothers who are gang banging in a gang carrying pistols, God loves you too. Don't let the devil trick you. Don't let the devil put the six foot on us. Don't let the devil put you behind bars. You're better than that. You're much better than that. And I know to some of you right now who's mourning over the death of Michael Jackson. He was a great entertainer. He was the greatest artist of all time. And you know what? And it, and it really touched my heart to see him go. At, su at such a time as this, there were many more lives he could have lived, and lives were being affected by him. And I give him that, and I don't take that from him. But he was also a tormented soul that's been tormented since childhood. And I do blame his father because his father shouldn't. His father was probably trying to do the right thing. That's understandable, but you went a little too far with that. He should have grown up and be a normal child just like anybody else. But he lived in this tormented world, this world above. And believe me, only God knows where he's headed. I don't know where he's headed, but God knows. But I will say this, if he had made it, got right with God and made his life right with God, then brother, I don't I don't have nothing to do with that. But if he have not made got right with God, and I got then all I can say is that he'll wake his eyes up and see himself in hell and lake of fire. But I but I do continue to pray for the family. That they will get right with God and come on and let God have it. And to you that's mourning his death. In the name of Jesus, all will be well with you. God will bless you. But this is this is a warning. This is a message to the America. Death don't have no name to it. Death can strike anybody, even me. But I pray the Lord give me enough time to make myself right with Him every day, that I will be clear with Him. Now, I'm not gonna sit there and say that I'm ready to die because I ain't gonna say that. Oh, come on, death, take me. You know what? I would like to live longer myself. I would love to see my grandchildren. I would love. To live a long life, a better life, I would love it. But we don't know what life has in store for us. But while we do have this life, let's give Jesus a chance. And allow God to be your Lord and your Savior. The Bible says, Repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for remission of your sin, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. At that end, God bless you.
I'm gonna leave a little